Cockleshell Bay is a town near the sea with seagulls and sunshine and sound. There are shops that sell ices and bright coloured kites that will fly from a string in your hand. There are white painted houses along the seafront and one's called the Bucket and Spade. It's where people stay and two children play with all the good friends that they've made. So meet Robin and Rosie of Cockleshell Bay. Finish your breakfast, have you? Asked Gran Rowdy. Yes, Gran, said Robin and Rosie. Well, let's have your dishes then. They ain't going to wash themselves up, are they? Oh, no, Gran, giggled Rosie. Sorry, Gran. Uh, here's my plate, said Robin. Sorry. And mine, said Rosie. Ah, oh, that's good, children. Well, what are you going to do with yourselves this morning, hmm? Hmm, don't know, said Rosie. What shall we do, Robin? I don't know, said Robin. I thought of what to do yesterday. You'll never think of anything. I do, yes, said Rosie. I thought of hide and seek and sailing around the world and did not. I thought of sailing round the world. That's enough of that. Gran Rowdy interrupted. I'll have no argy fine in my kitchen. Robin and Rosie stopped. Sorry, Sorry Gran. Gran. I should just think so too. And then Robin had an idea. I know. We could watch the fishing boats in the harbour. Oh, yes. That's a good idea. Well, I don't want to be a wet blanket. But you'll have to have a grown-up with you. Oh said Robin. Yes. Can't you come with us? asked Rosie. Oh, afraid not, my dear. I've got to bottom the bedrooms today. What's bottoming? asked Rosie. What's a wet blanket? asked Robin. Oh, you two, two ask a lot of questions. Well, a wet blanket is someone who's always saying that things aren't as good as you think they are. And what's... All right, Rosie, give us a chance. Bottoming the bedrooms means that I've got to clean all the bits you can't see, as well as all the bits you can. Now, off you go and let me get on with my work. Come on, Rosie. Hey, let's see if Mum and Dad can take us to the harbour. But Mr Cockle was busy too. Sorry, kids, he said but I've got to finish these drawings in the next half hour and then tear off with them to the builder. Mr. Bolster, said Robin. That's right. Maybe Mummy's going shopping near the harbour. Oh, sorry, she said, but as soon as Grand Rout is out of the kitchen, I've got to do some baking. Oh, Mummy. Sorry. Oh, well, said Rosie. We'll just go and muck about in the garden. <sighs> said Robin. Nothing to do here. No, said Rosie. Come on, let's go and see Mr. Ship. Oh, good idea, said Robin. Come on, I'll give you a piggyback there. Mr. Ship was drinking his morning cup of tea. Hello, Hello Mr. Ship. Ship. Hello, my dears, said the old sailor. You're having fun. <laughs> what are you going to do today? Well, said Robin, we wanted to go and watch the fishing boats in the harbour. But we'd have to have a grown-up with us, said Rosie. And they're all too busy, said Robin. And then he and Rosie both thought of the same thing. Could you, you take, take us to the harbour, Mr. Ship? They said, both together. Oh, sorry, he said. But I promised to make a new garden gate for Mrs. Povey, who lives up the road. And I'll have to finish it off today. Oh. Robin and Rosie groaned. Hang on, though, said Mr. Ship. I've got an idea. Now, just you wait there. And he went into his shed. I wonder what he's gone for, said Rosie. Don't know, said Robin. Oh, he's coming. Mr. Ship was carrying two long, sort of, poles. Now then, he said, what do you think these are? Um, little flagpoles, said Robin. No, clothes props, said Rosie. No, said Mr. Ship. Both wrong. They're fishing rods. Ooh, said Robin and Rosie. Fishing, fishing rods. rods. So now you don't have to watch people fishing. You can go fishing yourselves. But, uh, where, Mr. Ship? 
Why, on my boat, of course, said the sailor. But, Mr. Ship, there isn't any water. Well, doesn't mean to say you won't catch anything, chuckled Mr. Ship. You'd be surprised what you can catch from my boat. A few minutes later, Robin and Rosie were on board Mr. Ship's boat with their rods over the side. And Mr. Ship had gone back, he said, to making Mrs. Povey's gate, although the children couldn't hear him banging anymore. I'm going to catch a herring, said Rosie. Well, said Robin, I'm going to catch a, a, a shark. Well, I'm going to catch a whale. You said you were going to catch a herring and a whale. You can't. You've only got one hook. Well, you can't catch a shark. Can? Can't? Ooh! Robin suddenly stopped arguing. My line tugged. Gosh, said Rosie. You must have caught a... Wow! My line tugged too. Quick! Pull them in. Oh, hurry up. Oh, great. Wow, what is it? Oh, ooh! Gosh! G golly! I've got a welly boot. Uh, and I've got a sand bucket. Oh, let's try again. Oh, yes, let's. They lowered their lines over the side, waited, and sure enough, I've got another. So have I. This time, Robin caught a welly boot to go with Rosie's. Rosie caught a spade to go with Robin's bucket. And the next time, they caught an old tyre and, of all things, Mr. Ship's tea mug. And then Rosie spotted something. Look, she said. A net. What? A fishing net. Look. Oh, yes. Hey, perhaps we could catch lots of fish. Well, lots of things, all at once, like the fishermen do. Yes, said Rosie. Let's try. So they took the net and spread it out. Right, said Robin. When I say three, we'll throw it over the side. All right, said Rosie. I'll count two. One, two, two three. three. Whoa! There was a big shout from down below. Robin and Rosie looked at each other. Oh, wow! Oh, bless my barnacles! I think we've caught something. I think you're right. We'd better have a look. Golly! There was Mr. Ship with the fishing net over his head. Great flying fishes, said Mr. Ship. You might well, golly and gosh. Hang on, said Robin. We're coming down to help. Oh, there I want. Minding my own business, muttered Mr. Ship, when a blooming great net lands on my head. Here we are, Mr. Ship. We'll get you out. Oh, I should think so, too. I'm all tangled up. I'm sorry, Mr. Ship. Yes, sorry, said Robin. We were trying to catch more things. Oh, said Mr. Ship. Like uh, boots and buckets, eh? Yes, said Robin. And then he said, Hey. And Rosie said, how did you know we caught... <laughs> oh, Mr. Ship, said Rosie. You tied them onto our lines. <laughs> Laughed Mr. Ship. So oh, I did. Oh, I thought I'd catch you out. Oh, but you caught me instead. <laughs> oh, and then they all laughed, while Robin and Rosie helped Mr. Ship out of the net. And just as they finished, Robin? Rosie? Gran Rowdy called from the back door of the bucket and spade. Yes, Gran. Your lunch is ready, my dears. Oh, great, said Rosie. I'm starving. Yes, yeah, so am I, said Robin. Right, off you go then, said Mr. Ship. And you can come back for a bit more fishing afterwards. Oh, thanks, Mr. Ship. Yes, thanks. Bye. Bye. Bye-bye, my dears. Bye. Oh, Gran, we've been fishing. Goodness gracious me, said Gran Rowdy. And I caught a welly boot. And I caught a bucket. And, and we, we both, both caught, caught Mr. Mr. Ship. And, and we're, we're starving. <laughs> well, I never, laughed Gran. I'm not surprised you're starving after all them adventures. Oh, you'd better come in for your lunch. <laughs> it's fish and chips. <laughs> <laughs> and they all went in for lunch. <laughs>